That is called talking. That lets a predator know that the gazelles are fit and strong and would be very hard to catch. Also on your right, the large brown animals that you'll see are greater kudu. They can get up to 600 pounds and are known for their jumping capabilities. They can jump as high as 8 to 10 feet off the ground very easily. Given the right opportunity, could possibly jump over this train. Coming up on your left is our capybara enclosure, and they are the world's largest land rodent. They can get up to 160 pounds. They do live a semi-aquatic lifestyle. They have webs between their toes, which allow them to swim through the water very easy. They are cousin to the capybara uh, guinea pig, and when they are born, they are the size of a full-grown guinea pig. And our little capybara babies back there are just at about a month old now. In the wild, should they sense danger, they will emit a loud call warning other capybara that something is in the area, and they'll often seek shelter in the water. They're also referred to as a water hog. And on your right are more of our greater kudu. Yeah. On your right, close to the water's edge, you probably won't be able to see him past that tree there, is our 14-year-old male orangutan named Louie. Males like to be secluded, so they like to be alone in their area, and that is why he is there all by himself. Louis' arm span will be about 8 feet wide, and he'll get to be about 380 pounds. If he was in the wild, he would live most of his life up in the top of trees and very seldom ever come down to the ground. While he's up there, he will eat bark, leaves, nuts, fruits, berries, insects, and he will even eat bird eggs as well. He'll build himself a nest on the top of trees, out of branches and leaves, and he might even build himself a pillow and blanket as well. Coming up on your left is our orang uh, white rhinoceros family. We do have a daddy named Robbie, a mama named Kate, and their daughter's name is Katana. Katana is the first white rhinoceros to be born here at the Gulf Free Zoo, and she was born in January of 2018. Little rhinos are born without their horns, so she will stay with mom and dad about three years while that horn grows and develops. The horns are made of a protein called keratin, and that is the same stuff that makes your nails and your hair grow. Rhinos also have very poor eyesight, so they depend mostly on their sense of smell and hearing to know what's in their area. Should they get startled in the wild, they will charge in the direction that the sound came from at 30 miles an hour. And when a rhino charges, it sounds like thunder rumbling from the ground. You'll hear the rhino before you see it. A full-grown male rhino can get up to about 6,000 pounds, while a female gets to be about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds. Coming up on your left, the two little fawns together there with the white underbellies. Those are red lechway babies. The black fur that's on there legs is water resistant and it allows them to run through knee high water very quickly and easily. In the wild they cannot outrun their natural predator on dry land so they will dwell around marshlands where they have the greatest chances for survival. On your right the brown animals with white spots are access deer. Unlike our native white tailed deer they will keep those spots their entire lives and they'll get brighter as they grow older. Oh, and there's a rhea nest. The large gray and white birds that you're going to see on their preserve, those are rhea. They are the fourth largest non-flying bird in the world. They lack the breastbone that connects all the necessary muscles for flight, but they do have powerful legs that allow them to run about 30 miles an hour. And it's actually a male rhea that builds that nest, incubates those eggs, and takes care of those chicks after they've hatched. These two little feathered friends on your left are Japanese geese, and they are the meanest pair on the preserve. On 
your left, the brown animals that look like they're wearing black and white striped socks up by the fence there. Those are nilgai, and they are the largest antelopes from India. When males are grown, they are referred to as a blue bull because their fur will turn a blue silver color. Coming up on your right is our ring-tailed lemur island, and they are from Madagascar. They got their name in the 18th century from explorers that would camp on the island. At night, they would see eyes staring at them from the forest, and it made it look like it was haunted. So they call the little forest dwellers lemur, which means ghosts or spirits of the dead. On your left is our Nile River Hippo enclosure. We do have Cleopatra and Kiboko in there somewhere. They do stay underwater about 16 hours out of the day, but they do not swim. They will walk or bounce along the bottom of lakes and rivers. They can hold their breath underwater for six long minutes, and they can also sleep under there as well. They are big eaters and will eat 87 pounds of grass and fur today. They will walk as far as three miles from water to find good grazing pasture. On dry land, a hippo can run right alongside a rhino at 30 miles an hour. And a, they say in Africa, it's not the lion or the tiger in the bushes you have to watch out for. It's actually a hippo. On your right is our western lowland gorilla island, and they are the smallest of their species. We do have a silverback male named Babuka, a female named Rwanda, and their offspring name is Kigali. They are peaceful animals by nature. They are herbivores. They do eat a lot of grasses, plants, fruits, vegetables, and insects. In the wild, they'll build themselves nests up in the top of trees out of branches and leaves. It takes them about five minutes to make these nests, and they will make themselves a new nest each night. Guests want to know how do we keep the gorilla on the island? Gorillas do not swim, so they don't venture out into the water. They do have very dense muscle tissue that makes them very, very heavy. Should they step off the island and into the water, unfortunately, they would sink straight to the bottom. Coming up on your right, the three gray animals with U-shaped horns standing in the shade. Those are white-bearded wildebeest. In the wild, you'll find them grazing alongside zebra. Zebra will eat the top part of the grass, while the wildebeest likes these shorter pieces closest to the ground. Wildebeest also have very strong instincts to follow, and should they get lost from their herd, they would follow pretty much anything. They'll follow a bus, they'll follow a human, they'll even follow their natural predator. Coming up on your left, the white animals you see are anex antelope. They have splayed hooves which allow them to walk on sand without sinking quite as deeply as other animals. And our little anex baby there is just about a month old now. preserve you see on your right our camel enclosure there are two kinds in the world there's the bactrian with two humps and the dromedary with one hump we have the dromedary camel the hump on their back stores fat deposits that help nourish camels and food sources are scarce they can hold up to 80 pounds of fat in that hump at a time and should they use that for survival it will deplete and slowly slide to one side of their body Camels can walk 100 miles without drinking water, and when they do drink, they will guzzle down more than 30 gallons in less than 13 minutes. They have very thick lips, which allows them to eat the thorny bushes in the desert like cactus that most other animals cannot eat, and that's where they get most of their water from. Long ago, they were referred to as ships of the sand because the only way you could cross any desert was if you were on the back of a camel. They are born with very thick hide, two rows of eyelashes, and a clear eyelid that opens side to side, and the ability to open and close their nostrils when they need to. In the desert, that protects them from desert storms, keeps the sand out of their eyes and from flying up their nose. 
They have very thick pads on their chest and legs, which allows them to sit on hot sand comfortably. They can carry 900 pounds on their back for 20 miles. They can run a top speed of 45 miles an hour in short bursts. And they can run long distances at 25 miles an hour. your right is our African spur tortoises and they are the third largest in the world. They got their name from the spurs on their legs which they use to dig burrows underground to stay nice and cool. If you've ever wondered can a tortoise feel you touch their shell, they definitely can. They have fused spines like we do so that gives them the ability to feel everything on the outside as well. And that concludes our ride on the Safari Line Limited. Please remain seated until the train comes to a complete stop. Once again, my name is Susan. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will answer them if I can. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the Gulf Free Zoo.